Hey, what's up? This your boy, Big Man. You already know what it is, man. So let's get right to it. Now, this YSL, Rico, and Diamond has blown all the way apart. You have Young Thug sitting off on an island by himself, and it looks like a lot of his co-defendants are copping pleas, getting deals, and Young Thug is hanging out there in the balance. Now, when Gunna turned over and signed his plea deal, there was a lot of mixed reaction. People didn't know how to perceive it. Originally, people were happy for Gunna. They were glad at the fact that Gunna was free. But then it came to seem like this would all hurt Young Thug in the long run. What's even crazier is following that, two more people signed plea deals. Then you had somebody else today sign a plea deal that just shook the whole case apart. Young Thug's brother, Oom Funk. One of his artists on his YSL label, standout individual as far as YSL is concerned, also signed a plea deal. And it's looking like he's coming home with the same situation that Slime Life Shorty and YSL Duke did. Now what seems weird to a lot of people is, these plea deals seem like they're turning their back on Young Thug. Is Young Thug being left out there on his own, or is this a situation where everybody has to do what's best for themselves? Now, before we get to the specifics, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and man, let's get it. Now, in this YSL Rico indictment, you see a pattern here. It seems like it's a lot of the people who have been indicted in this YSL Rico indictment who have gotten plea deals, they seem to have smaller cases or lesser charges. Now, when I mean lesser charges, I mean not the most strict charges in the case. Nothing tied to a murder or anything like that, right? You have Slime Life Shotty, who essentially was in the Rico indictment for wearing a Make America Slime Again hoodie. I mean, that was like the gist of it, the whole reason why he was in the Rico indictment. That in another picture where it looked like they could tie him to YSL. A lot of people are saying that, y, that YSL as a whole is over now because of all the people doing deals. The crazy part is you've got Oom Funk, who is Young Thug's brother and also an artist on his label who recently signed his own plea deal. So let's look at the plea agreement for Oom Funk. Now, similar to the other plea deals in this RICO indictment, you see that Oom Funk's real name is listed here and you see the paperwork. Now, this was provided by a New York Times reporter who's been covering this story. So this, the validity of this paperwork, I wouldn't question. I think it's, I think it's solid paperwork. Now, when you look at the paperwork though, you see that it has the same things, the charges listed. So let's talk about the charges. Now, the first charge that he had, and I have to go say this, he's only listed in the indictment twice once for receiving stolen property and the other for actually being in the RICO. It's kind of like a catch-all. So for the first charge, you have conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Then for the second charge, you see theft by receiving stolen property. Now, what's crazy about this is Oom Funk was looking at 12 years in for these charges if he was took this to court. So instead of that, he had no choice but to sign this deal. Now, a lot of people are are creating a lot of backlash because of people signing deals in this situation, and it seems to be hurting Young Thug. Other people, some legal professionals are saying that this won't have any effect on Young Thug, but it just doesn't make sense. If you have a RICO indictment, why have all these people sign deals publicly and publicly say that YSL is a gang and all this if it's not gonna help your case? It seems like a lot of the people who have been sitting for a while who could possibly have a better chance at beating their case have been getting called up to sign these plea deals. Slime Life showed it being the prime example. I think he probably had the best chance of beating his case if you really look at it, man. Like, how many people can you hold for wearing a hoodie that other people buy, merchandise that's provided by a legit organization, and put them into a RICO case? In that case, anybody else who wears that hoodie and who lives in the city of Atlanta should be held to that same standard. But it seemed like the best thing for Slime Life Shorty to do was to sign the plea deal, and it seems like for Oom Funk, that was the same thing, man. Now you look and you see his sentence. Now for the sentence, they have a 12 year sentence with two years commuted to time served. The balance of his probate, meaning his probation, will be 10 years. So in these situations, we've seen that they've been getting time served. Meaning you sign this deal, you go home right immediately. Now for a lot of people, that's too much to pass up. You couldn't possibly imagine sitting in jail for six, seven months in one of the worst jails in the United States 
and still get the opportunity to go home immediately. All you gotta do is sign this plea deal. And it seems like for Umfum, the temptation was too much for him. He had to take this deal. Now to be real, if they caught him red handed with some stolen property, it is what it is. But the fact that he would have had to almost do 12 years behind that, or this is a 12 years commuted sentence, Oon Funk's lawyers would probably look at him like he was crazy if he did not take this deal. So he had to take it, right? And you see that this is also running concurrently with the other charge. So Oon Funk gets to go home and Jeffrey Williams, AKA Young Thug, is still in court trying to battle this out, man. So let's actually look at some of these tweets from this New York Times reporter about the situation. Now, as you see right here, he reposted the rest of the paperwork for Umfum. And we're gonna break that down, but in the post, he said this. He said, Umfum, Quantavius Greer, is Young Thug's brother who got out of prison on appeal in 2019 after serving 11 years of a life sentence for murder. So he already had a life sentence for murder and he's already got a felony obviously over his head. So it looks like he had no other choice but to take this plea deal or he'd be seeing that same type of time. Nobody wants to spend half of their life in jail or prison, right? Now, it goes on to say, the final condition of his release today is no contact with your brother, Jeffrey Williams, until this case has been concluded. So he can't even get in contact with Young Thug at all and even explain his side of things or at least tell Young Thug exactly what went down. So let's look at the conditions of his release. Now in A, it says you will perform 750 hours of community service. In B, it says if called by any party in this case, you will testify truthfully, but reserve your right to assert your Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. Now, there's been a lot of people arguing about what that really means. You had Gunner's lawyer come out to say that that means that if they go to court and they're called to the stand, they have every right to plead the fifth if they're asked anything about Young Thug or anybody involved in the case because they could also incriminate themselves. The streets aren't buying it though. They're still labeling a lot of these guys who are signing these plea deals, rats, calling them snitches, and there's a lot of memes out there about Gunner specifically right now. Also Slime Life Shardy, also YSL Lil Duke. But let's look at the rest of these conditions. So C, you shall not have or possess no, no guns during the term of this sentence or any time thereafter, unless your rights to do so is restored. Also it says you shall not commit no criminal acts, and it puts them on a curfew for the next 10 years. Remember, these pro this probation period is for 10 years. So he's gonna be on a curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., meaning that's the time he has to be within his house or domicile unless he's working, unless he's in school, or unless some sort of emergency arises. Also, he can have no contact with any other co-defendants on this indictment except through counsel. So that means he can't contact Young Thug, he can't contact Gunna, he can't contact Lil Duke, he can't contact uh, Slime Life Shawty. Everybody has to be separated in this situation until the case is concluded. And they specifically said at the end, no contact with your brother, Jeffrey Williams, until the case has concluded. To foot stomp that and let them know that nobody in this case is gonna be able to help each other or speak to each other, even those who have signed plea deals. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think that Oom Funk did like everybody else and threw a Young Thug, AKA Jeffrey Williams, out there for the wolves and does this make young thugs case even harder or do you feel like everybody at this time sees that everybody else is taking deals and they just doing what's best for themselves personally be it family or not now with that this has been your boy big man do me a favor make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you get a notification every time i do one of these updates and we out of here peace